In the last video, we saw that the Horvath clock is the best epigenetic clock for predicting chronological age. But Dunedin Pace may be the best epigenetic clock for predicting the epigenetic speed of aging. And I covered this story uh, in further detail in an earlier video. So if you're interested in that, it'll be in the right corner. But for the guts of that story, we can see that here. On the y-axis, we've got the change in Dunedin Pace. So the change for the epigenetic speed of aging. And then there are two groups. AL is ad lib, people who ate as much as they wanted, whenever they wanted, and then CR. So in this study, this was a 12% calorie restriction, human calorie restriction study for two years. And then there were three time points, baseline 12 and 24 months after starting the intervention. And what we can see is that people who ate as much as they wanted, whenever they wanted, had, a, had an increase, a significant increase in their epigenetic speed of aging at both the 12 and 24 month time points when compared with people who were on 12% calorie restriction who had a slower epigenetic pace of aging as measured by Dunedin Pace. Now, the importance of that finding is that other gold standard epigenetic clocks, including Horvath, but also DNA methylation, the DNA methylation version of PhenoAge and GrimAge were not associated with an epigenetic age reduction for people on CR for two years, which highlights the need and pace as potentially the best clock for measuring the epigenetic speed of aging. So with that in mind, a major goal of the channel is to optimize biomarkers of as many organ systems as possible, even down to the molecular level, which is what epigenetic chain changes are indicative of. So with that in mind, what's my data as I now have 14 tests. So for the most recent blood test that I have data, which was on April 29th, 2024, I sent blood to True Diagnostic. Discount link in the video's description if you want to measure Dunedin Pace on your own. So for this test, I got a Dunedin Pace value of 0.81. What does that mean? 0.6 is the slowest epigenetic aging rate. In contrast, 1.4 is the fastest epigenetic aging rate. So a 0.81 is on the right side of this equation, relatively slower epigenetic aging, but the goal is to get to the slowest rate of epigenetic aging, which is around 0.6. So I've got some work to do, somewhat good news, but still some work to do. Now, as I mentioned for many biomarkers, it's important to not get too high or too low, but to look at year-to-year -year changes for full context. So with that in mind, this is just one test. Let's take a look at all test data since I started tracking this in 2022. As I, again, I have 14 tests as shown here. So when I first started tracking over three tests in 2022, average Dunedin pace was 0.84. And then over eight tests in 2023, 0, 0.80, so a little bit better. And then after the first three tests in 2024, about the same as 2023 so far, 0.81. So what we can see from these 14 tests at worst is that Dunedin pace is mostly stable. Now that might not be impressive. You know, it's not 0.6, but Dunedin pace increases during aging. So resisting an age-related change, especially an increase, is a small win. And we can see that age-related increase for Dunedin pace in this plot. Now this is true, diagnostic, true diagnostics plot. So there probably is some healthy user bias going on where people who are using this test are already generally healthy. Nonetheless, we can see that Dunedin pace increases or the epigenetic speed of aging using this test increases during aging as indicated by the red arrow and with Dunedin pace values on the y-axis, chronological age on the x. And then we can see that my data point at 0.81 most recently is below the average for my chronological age, so a slower speed of epigenetic aging relative to the population average for someone of my chronological age. So in terms of Dunedin pace goals, they are to achieve a 0.6 consistently achieve 0.6, the slowest epigenetic aging rate, but also to resist the age-related increase. So, so far I've got one of these that is in good news, it's checked, but the other, I haven't yet optimized that. So how can I get it down to 0.6? And also, obviously I wanna resist the age-related change too. So if, for those who are unfamiliar with the channel, after every test, I calculate correlations with diet, and I detailed that full approach in the last video, so I'll put that in the right corner if you want to check it out. So for this test, I evaluated 103 comparisons for foods, macro, and micronutrients against Dunedin Pace, with the top half of those correlations shown here. And note that the full list for correlations, all correlations with biomarkers, are on the correlations tier on Patreon, so if you're interested in that, check it out. 
All right, so what we can see in the middle is the lowercase r, that's the correlation coefficient. And on the right, we've got the p-value. So less than 0.05 being a nominally significant uh, correlation. And unfortunately, though, we can see that nothing is significant using a p-value cutoff of 0.05. The closest is vitamin B6 at a p-value of 0.08. So it would seem I'm out of luck for the next test, as I don't have any cor significant correlations with diet to drive the next intervention to try to improve the need of pace. So for now, the plan is to just collect more data. I tested eight times in 2023. I'm thinking about testing at least 10 times in 2024 to get as much data as soon as possible, to have more correlations, to potentially have enough data so that I can make further improvements. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount links that you may be interested in, including discount links for epigenetic testing, at-home metabolomics, NED quantification, oral microbiome composition, at-home blood testing with CyFox Health, which includes ApoB, but also GrimAge, green tea, diet tracking with coronameter, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, buy me a coffee. We've also got merch, so if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Diet Tiring brand, as I've got on here, that link and all of the other links will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.